It's Friday, March 22nd, 2024. A lot to talk about today. I'm going to get right into it. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification, all that good stuff. But uh, let's get right into it today. Markets um, down today, except for the NASDAQ. Dow Jones was down around 300. Everything pretty much was down except the dollar. The dollar was up. But as we talk about inflation daily, uh, House passes pork-filled bill to fully fund government. They're talking $1.2 trillion, the bill now heading to the Senate. Uh, none of this is going to go to anything that's going to make your life better. None of it's going to Social Security. It's going to be going to places like Ukraine. It's going to be going to so much garbage. Uh, it is not going to help your life one bit. But I bring it up because if you think that this is not inflationary, think again. Now, I don't know what the Senate's going to do. Who knows at this point? I, I think most politicians on both sides are very, very corrupt. But another $1.2 trillion, if this passes, think about how much more inflation is coming to your house. I mean, it is unbelievable uh, how... They just keep printing and printing and borrowing and borrowing and taxing and taxing. And the American people, especially the middle class, are paying a severe price for this. And we have not even gotten close to how severe all this inflation, money borrowing, uh, printing of money, how, how severe and how costly this is going to be, especially to the middle class and especially to the poor. It's going to get much worse. If anybody out there thinks that inflation is going away, they're not going to let it go away because the government cannot stop spending. I don't know why Jerome Powell does not get some guts and some backbone and go to Congress and say, hey, look, we've raised 11 times and all you continue to do is spend and spend and spend. And there is no way we can get uh, inflation under control with the amount of money that you keep spending, printing, and borrowing. Chrysler parent Stellantis laying off 400 salaried U.S. workers due to unprecedented uncertainties. Salaried employees uh, in its engineering department, technology, and software organizations. Cuts effective March 31st. Now, these are well-paying jobs. These are people that own homes. They're losing their jobs, and it's going to be very, very difficult to replace these type of jobs. And I bring an article like this up, this on, on CNBC, because you don't know when you're next, when it's going to be your turn, when you're going to be laid off. You could go into work Monday, and I hate to say this, I pray to God it doesn't happen to you, but nobody is immune from losing a job. You could go to work on Monday, and, and they could tell you that, hey, Friday's your last day. Today's your last day. Uh, many times, they don't even do that. They'll just send you an email or a text and say, don't come in today you're done. So make sure you're preparing for the worst case scenario, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's easier said than done, but if you're not preparing, if you're not paying the debts down, if you're not putting cash away, I mean, the one thing that was up today, everything down, um, cash was up. You got to have some amount of cash put away for emergency. Here's another one. Silicon Valley blues. High tech job cuts soar to highest level since dot-com crash. 50 thousand tech positions this year already eliminated. Last year, over 260,000 layoffs uh, in tech. And these, again, high paying jobs, very hard to replace. They're gone. And people who think that the housing market is going to come back and that the economy is going to come back, it cannot when you're losing these type of jobs. These are good jobs. These are well paying, high paying jobs. And we are seeing the elimination of so many of these jobs, and many of these jobs are going to be replaced by AI. So the economy um, is going to get worse, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to say that, but that is the reality. Prove me wrong. Tell me why it's going to get better. It's not, I, I don't see from uh, a 12-month perspective or a 12-month outlook, I just don't see how it gets better. There's too many layoffs. There's still too much inflation. Um, and now, you know, we've, we've got... Uh, uh, the, the House trying to pass this $1.2 trillion uh, bill to extend even more debt with the U.S. government. And if the Senate passes this, 
you're guaranteed to see a lot more inflation. It's not going away. Student loan forgiveness may come for 380,000 borrowers, president says. Uh, this on CNBC, this is absolutely infuriating. Uh, you should be very angry. The administration has cleared the student loans of nearly 4 million people, totaling $143.6 billion. Now, do you think that um, these loans, this debt just disappears and goes away? No, you're paying for it. You're on the hook for this. Starting next week, the administration will send an email to nearly 380,000 additional borrowers that they're on track for loan cancellation within two years if they continue to meet the requirements. You're paying for this. I'm paying for this. I, I, I think this is just an absolute disgrace that people agreed, signed on the dotted line, promised to pay this money back, and now they're not going to. They, they agreed to this obligation. And now we have to pay it back. This is completely wrong. And you know I don't get political on this show. You don't have to be political. There is right, there is wrong. Why would anybody on any side of the aisle think that they're responsible for somebody else's debt, somebody else's obligation? This is completely wrong, and it sends a terrible message. Next, I mean, why pay any of your bills back? Maybe you don't make your house payment. Maybe you don't make your car payment. Maybe you don't pay your credit card back. And maybe the government will just say, hey, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. We'll pay for it. Extremely, extremely dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. Sends a very, very bad message. Uh, what is this instilling in younger people? Uh, people who agreed and, and made an obligation and didn't stick to it, that, hey, you know, somebody else will just pay for it. It's a bad, bad message. Mortgage rates to stay above 6% through 2025, Fannie Mae says. Uh, the housing market is in enormous trouble. This is Fannie Mae saying that mortgage rates to stay above 6%. Is that 6.5, 7, 8, 9? Nobody really knows, but I agree 100%. They will stay above 6%, and this is going to totally just lock up transactions in real estate. And we're going to see, really, the real estate industry continue to collapse, especially uh, after the lawsuit where uh, the National Association of Realtors had to pay out, what was it, $480 million, basically a half billion dollars in compensation. Uh, Commissions, they say, are going to drop between 25 and 50% now. So a lot of realtors running to the exits. And, you know, all these realtors that used to write me every day on social media and tell me how wrong I was about the housing market, that sales are going to pick up, that uh, mortgage rates were going to drop. And, you know, they didn't even know what was coming. Uh, basically, this was a, a black swan event that just hit the real estate industry that now uh, the buyer's agents... Uh, are, are basically, they don't know how they're going to get paid. The seller's agent is still going to get paid, but the buyer's agent, they don't know how they're going to work that out. So we're going to see a lot of lawsuits. Uh, e &O insurance is going to skyrocket. We're going to see a lot of agents getting out of the business. And uh, we'll see how it all how it all pans out. But uh, if you're in the real estate industry, mor mortgage, your realtor, whatever it may be, this industry is on borrowed time. It is going to get much, much more difficult to make money, especially after this lawsuit. And now, with the economy continuing to collapse, mortgage rates to stay high, possibly going higher, uh, it is going to be very, very difficult to make money. So I hope if you're in the business, I hope you saved a lot of your money because you're going to see a massive downturn in the business. Americans increasing, increasingly upside down in auto loans as used car values fall. Uh, the FOMO in the auto industry, in, in auto sales, is over. They've fooled a lot of people. In fact, they fooled millions of people to you know, pay 30, 40, 50 percent above what a car was even worth. They fooled a lot of people. Now, used uh, vehicle prices down 4.4 percent in the fourth quarter of 2023. Uh, from the year before, uh, the percentage of new vehicle sales that had a trade-in with negative equity jumped 20.4%, up from 17.7% .7 in 2022. Uh, this is going to be another, another very difficult industry. Less people can qualify to buy these cars. Uh, inter interest rates to buy these cars have gone up. People have lost their butts on the cars that they just bought over the past couple of years. They were fooled. 
on the FOMO, just like a lot of people in real estate, right? Real estate agents telling you, you better buy, you better buy this house, the FOMO, um, you're never going to get this opportunity again. And they're still, and they're still saying the same thing that, hey, you know, rates are right at 7%. This is a great deal. It's a great opportunity. You, you know, rates are going to go down. You can refi, yada, yada, yada. Um, again, they're, they're trying to fool you into the worst decision uh, that you could possibly make. The smart money is sitting on the sidelines, licking their chops, waiting for the sales. And look, I don't know if that's three months from now, six months, nine months, a year and a half from now. I don't know, but they're coming. This economy has already collapsed. People now are getting laid off in droves. Their credit scores are being destroyed. Their savings is being destroyed. They're paying high interest on cars, credit cards, you name it. They can, you got 78% of this country living paycheck to paycheck. Somebody tell me how the typical American is going to be able to afford to keep their house while they're charging more for home insurance, uh, taxes on your home are going up. And, and of course, every time you go to the grocery store, the gas pump, everything is going up. They are going to put so much pressure on people. So many people are, are going to lose everything they have. And that is really sad to say. Uh, it didn't have to be this way, but it's almost like it's being orchestrated that they're putting so much pressure on the average person that they just can't afford to live. I don't know how they're going to continue to pay these home prices. Um, I don't know. It, it's going to really get bad out there. Danger ahead. CBO says debt will consume 166% of GDP in 30 years. Uh, that is game over, ladies and gentlemen. Game over, 166% of GDP. So this debt consumption is just out of control. And there is a lot of danger ahead. And this coming from Fox Business. Uh, debt's a killer. And we're going to continue to be running these outrageous debts while we have major super bubbles that continue to inflate. And the average consumer... Uh, doesn't own nothing except a lot of debt. And the worst time to be a debt slave is during a massive recession depression. When your credit score is, is, is down, when you have no money saved up, you have no assets, this is a, this is a terrible time to be broke. Um, my heart goes out to people. Not everybody you, you know, got fooled with the FOMO. Not everybody went and bought a new car. Not everybody lived beyond their means. I understand that. There are hardworking Americans that did it the right way, and they are paying a severe price now for all of this government spending, uh, the inflation now that was caused by the government and the Fed. And how bad does it get? Nobody really knows, but people are hurting right now. And my heart goes out to the people. Uh, who did not ask for this, who, who, who were not part of this, who lived a normal life, lived below their means, paid off their bills. But unfortunately, when your utility bills go up double, triple, when your house insurance goes up, your auto insurance is going up. I mean, mine's gone, my auto insurance has gone up probably 25, 20%. Uh, I know people who, who's, whose auto insurance policies have gone up 50%. But you know how how many people can afford a five six seven eight hundred dollar you know electric bill out here? You know out here when it's hitting one hundred and twenty hundred twenty five degrees, it is not uncommon to get a five six seven eight hundred dollar bill because you're running your electric your 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 air conditioning twenty four hours a day. A, a bill that would normally be three hundred is now you know six seven eight hundred depending on what city you live in and, and the size of your house. But how long can people continue to do this? People that were living in their means didn't ask for these humongous bills, uh, and now they're getting them, and it is it is eating them up alive. They're tapping into retirements, their savings accounts, they're they're running and using their credit cards. It's a disaster. Everyone is panicking. Major cocoa processor scrambles to find beans as prices hyperinflate. It says here prices of, of cocoa beans are soaring weekly as cocoa beans become harder and harder to find. Whose fault is this? Or is this something now that we're going to blame on Russia? You tell me. Comment down below on any of this. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe. Uh, here's another one from The Hedge today. Drone video reveals massive New York City migrant tent city kept under wraps uh, by the media. 
Uh, I was watching some of this video. It is absolutely shocking. It literally it looks like everywhere you go now. I, I saw some video of San Diego a couple days ago. I did a video down there probably about two years ago. I was absolutely horrified with the amount of, of homeless people living in, in, in San Diego, right outside of downtown San Diego. How many people were living in dilapidated RVs and broken down cars and trucks? Now it's getting even worse. And I'm looking at this video today of New York City and this, this tent, tent city or this camp. It's unbelievable. It's everywhere now. It's everywhere. You know, people years ago when I would shoot videos uh, in um, uh, L.A. and Skid Row, people just said, well, that's just in those parts. That's just Skid Row. Now... All of that, the, uh, of those tents and Skid Row and all those areas have expanded into Beverly Hills, Culver City, Santa Monica, uh, you name it, all the way down to the desert here in, in, in the Palm Springs area, Coachella Valley. It's, at, it's all across um, California. It's all across America now. Chicago, New York, it's everywhere. Uh, and we're just watching cities be absolutely destroyed. Who's paying for this? Who is supporting and financing all this? Unfortunately, it is your tax dollars. WolfStreet.com, amid weak demand for existing homes, active listings and price reductions jump. The rate of sales was down, of home sales, down 26% from February of 2022. Home sales are down 29% from February 2021 and down 19% from Fe February of 2019. Home sales remain, it says, at very low levels. If you're in the industry, you know. You're, you're not making any money. The rate of sales in January and in the last few months of 2023 had been the lowest since the worst months of the housing bust in 2010. Active listings, we're, we're looking at a, a little bit over 665,000 active listings right now. Uh, and that is up 14.7% from February of 2023, up by 92% from February of 2022, and up by 43% from February 2021. So there is no doubt the listings are beginning to hit. And of course, you have more and more new home construction taking place across America. Sales in February of 2024 were down by 19% uh, compared from February of, 2020, uh, of 2019. National median sold price in February, $384,500. That's up 5.7% year over year, but down 7.1% from the all-time high of June of 2022. Uh, the article goes on to say, and I'm just going through uh, some, some of the highlights here. Check out the article. Price reductions jumped a whopping 30% in February. That is up substantially. And as I look for homes in the South, I can tell you every day, price reduction, price reduction, price reduction, price reduction. Every day, I see a handful of reductions. Supply of 2.9 months at his inventory was the highest since February of 2020. Uh, so look, as we continue to see more job losses, more inflation, uh, insurance costs on autos and, and, and the home, uh, the pool of qualified buyers is shrinking, credit scores are falling. Uh, the, the housing market is on borrowed time before we really begin to see things really crack. We're seeing minor cracks right now, but sooner or later, they're gonna, the dam is going to show massive cracks, and the dam will break. You're going to have a lot more inventory, a lot less qualified buyers. Prices will be forced to come down. Uh, we're going to see problems, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, shifting gears here, Fox Business. DMV outage temporarily hits offices nationwide, impacting drivers, license services, and permit tests. This occurred yesterday. Now, uh, they're blaming it on a loss in cloud connectivity. Is it another glitch? The system has been resolved. They resolved it yesterday afternoon. Is it another glitch or is it something more ominous? It just seems that this is happening every day. Financial services, banks, DMV, uh, water filtration systems, sewer services, you name it, it is happening now. It's happening to the DMV where everybody's information is sitting. Interesting. Uh, here's another one. Barry Manilow to host fashion mogul Michael Smith's mega Joe Biden fundraiser. Uh, so while 
the world is burning and missiles now going off uh, in Eastern Europe again, all kind of things going on. We got, we've got uh, Chinese uh, warplanes flying over Taiwan. We've got, you know, soldiers being knocked down here uh, in El Paso, Texas yesterday. Jill Biden to headline alongside ambassador to Spain, James Costos and fashion uh, designer, Michael Smith. Reportedly, if you want to take a photo with these people, it will cost a hundred thousand uh, dollars. It's just you know I bring it up because uh, look, I'm no fan of any of these people. Um, you know, I, I bring it up because this is literally five minutes from where I'm making this video, and as the world burns, as people are hurting, we have uh, Jill. I'm just going to call her Dr. Jill out. Dr. Jill out here uh, in the Palm Springs area with Barry Manilow uh, trying to raise money. Uh, it's absolutely a joke. It's really sad. It's disgusting, actually. Um, while so many people are hurting, while the world is on fire, uh, these people are out here having a party, and you can take a picture with them for $100,000. Uh, I won't. I won't be showing up. That's for sure. A quick update: Yesterday, that woman from Spain who was checking on her, uh, her mother's uh, home in Manhattan, New York, uh, they caught the the squatters that took her life, um, which is good news. Unfortunately, they're probably already out. I, I would not be shocked if they let these people out. These two evil losers who took this woman's life, checking on her mom's Manhattan apartment, just got in from Spain. Uh, a, a violent, violent uh, assault. Uh, they they caught them. That's great news. Now what they're going to do with them is another story. Again, I would not be shocked if they just release them on bail or or just release them totally. Who knows? But uh, a sad state of affairs. Uh, this this nice woman loses her life checking on her mom's Manhattan apartment while they uh, viciously. Uh, took her life and then ran, ran off and, and, and drove off in her, her Lexus SUV. Uh, I hope they uh, get the death penalty, which I don't even know if New York has that, probably doesn't, but uh, they will meet their maker one day and I would hate to be them. I'm going to leave it there today. Uh, uh, a beautiful uh, Friday afternoon, got a good hour in with Coach Lionel, did an hour of boxing today and I ho hope and advise that all of you are training, that you're working on your combative skills. We're going to try to get out to the range next week. Uh, if we do, I will put that on the Rumble channel. A lot to talk about regarding training uh, and um, uh, being proficient with your tools. So have a good weekend. Have a safe weekend. Um, really, really quick before I close this video, I saw another video today. Just I just remembered. I don't know where this was. It was some subway. This maniac is going around just punching people in the face, mostly women. And there's a young woman, uh, young young woman on her phone. This guy has already uh, assaulted probably five, six, seven people. She's on her phone, not paying attention, no situational awareness. This guy is heading right towards her. He winds up and just throws a haymaker at her while she's looking down at her phone. Knocks her, you know, right onto her back. Hopefully she's okay. I don't know where this took place, but as I leave you today, please exercise situational awareness, get off the phones, stop being a zombie, stop you know staring with your head down in public because you could be the next victim. Uh, pay attention to where you're at. This is not the 1980s. This is not the 1950s. We are living in a whole different time. Be careful out there. This ain't Kansas anymore. Be careful, exercise situational awareness. Pray for this country. God bless all of you. Like, share, subscribe.